Hi, I'm Pierce Jens with Baratza Support. Today I'm going to show you how to change the timer switch on your conical burr coffee grinder. I'm going to use a Preciso as the example for you. If you're doing this on one of our other models, your adjustment ring will be a little different, but everything else will be the same. Let's begin. You'll need to change the timer switch if it is broken. This is noticed by the user as only being able to turn the grinder on and off by plugging and unplugging it from the wall. I have a new timer switch and knob kit ordered from our parts store. Step one is going to be to remove your hopper, the gasket, burr, grounds bin, the micro adjustment knob on the Preciso, the Virtuoso and all of our other conical coffee grinders do not have this knob. This applies only to the Preciso. To remove it, press down on the black adjustment ring inside the grinder, right behind the micro adjustment knob. Use a flathead screwdriver underneath the knob and pry it up and off. It will probably go shooting way off, so make sure the area around you is clean enough to be able to locate it. Go ahead and pull the knob off the side of the grinder. Next, we're gonna remove the case of the grinder. If you need further assistance with removing the case, please watch our other troubleshoot video describing how to do that for your model. Once the case is removed, rotate your micro adjustment arm clockwise until it stops and then you can lift the adjustment ring off of your grinder. Take care not to lose the small spring loaded detent that provides the clicking sound when you adjust your grind. Lift the interlock switch off of the gearbox and let it dangle to the rear. We need to remove the gearbox and motor assembly from the chassis. There are three screws that secure it to the chassis. Lift the gearbox and motor assembly off of the chassis and unplug the motor from the circuit board. Take care not to lose the rear motor mount. This does pull off unlike the front two. We're going to go ahead and set this assembly to the side. At this point we have easy access to the timer switch and the wires in the back of the timer switch. We need to loosen the 5 8 nut that holds the timer switch onto the chassis. You can do this using the correct size socket or you can use pliers to get it off. It is not on there very tight. Once the nut is removed, take your flathead screwdriver and pry between the switch and the chassis itself. You'll need to do this on one side and then on the other to get the switch to come out. Now that I have the switch removed from the chassis, I'm going to pull the leads off the back of the switch. We can discard the old switch, grab your new part, plug the wires into the back of the timer switch. The wires are a little bit different in length. While it does not matter which wire goes to which contact on the switch, it will fit better if you match them the way they came off. You can see this wire wants to be a little bit higher than this wire, so I'll go ahead and put 
on the timer like so. Press your new timer switch through the hole in the chassis. Use the 5 eighths nut to secure the timer switch to the chassis. Grab your wiring loop in the back for the interlock switch and run it to the outside of the rear mount like so. Get your gearbox and motor assembly and position it on the chassis. The motor should go right through the middle of the loop that your interlock switch makes. When installing the gearbox and motor assembly, make sure your chute gasket stays in position and does not fall off. I find it helps to put my index finger through the hole in the chassis and into the chute to help guide it into proper position without the gasket getting pinched or lost. Check to make sure that the two wires from the front switch are routed to the inside of the motor mounts. They will route easily to the outside of the motor mounts, like so. However, when you go to install your case, it will get caught on this wire and you will have to take it apart to resolve this issue. So just take a second now to ensure both wires are ran to the inside of the screw mounts. Make sure your rear motor mount grommet is in position. We're ready to put the three Phillips screws back on that secure the gearbox. On this grinder, the rear and timer switch motor mount screws are a machine screw with a small nut. Whereas the one on the front left of the grinder is a plastic thread cutting screw. You may have three thread cutting screws instead of two machine screws and one thread cutting screw. These do not need to be very tight, just snug. I have my drill torque set to zero. Before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and plug the motor back into the circuit board. I still have my interlock switch dangling off the back. I'm going to wait to install this until I have my adjustment ring in position. Grab your tiny spring-loaded detent that provides the clicking noise and set it in the column on the gearbox with the pointed side of the detent facing up. The bottom of your adjustment ring has serrations 180 degrees around it. Any point of these serrations over the detent will install well. Go ahead and put your adjustment ring on. You need to have the micro adjustment arm near the front left of the grinder at about the 7 o'clock position. Press gently down on the adjustment ring and then pull the micro adjustment arm towards the front to engage it onto the grinder. At this point you should be able to pick the grinder up by your adjustment ring. If you need further assistance installing your adjustment ring, please reference our separate troubleshoot guide and video. Now that I have the adjustment ring in position, I can put the interlock switch back on top of the gearbox. At this point I have but one leftover part the machine nut from the old timer switch. We can discard this. Slide your chassis back onto the grinder. With the Preciso, we need to make sure that the micro adjustment arm rides in the slot. 
You can see right now it doesn't want to go on because the arm is not well lined up with that slot. So I'm going to set it up right here and work it around a little bit until it lines up better. And now you can see it does line up well in that slot. And the case is not yet all the way snapped on. Knowing that it is lined up on the slot, I can go ahead and snap the case all the way back on. At this point, your adjustment ring should rotate easily. If it is not rotating easily, push down gently in the rear and it may pop down into a better position. Make sure your adjust ring is rotated all the way counterclockwise as it must be in this position for the burr hopper to install. Install your burr, taking care to align the red mark near the front right of the grinder. Install the gasket. Hopper. To install your micro adjustment button, you will be tempted to simply press it into place. However, it does not click properly if only pressed into place. We need to use a thin item to support under the micro adjustment arm so we can press it on place better. So I have my thin pocket knife reaching in the grinder underneath the micro adjustment arm for support and I'm going to simultaneously push down on that knob. And now you can hear it adjusts more positively. At this point, your timer switch replacement is complete and you're ready to return to grinding. Enjoy!